is the Chief Executive Officer of the Metropolitan Pier and Exposition Authority, the agency that owns and operates McCormick Place, the nation's largest convention center, and Navy Pier, Illinois' top visited tourist and leisure destination. Our guest today was appointed by Governor Blagojevich and works very closely with Mayor Daley. Our guest today is a Chicagoan and a graduate of DePaul University. She is a lifelong resident of Chicago and mother to her seven-year-old daughter, Megan. Ladies and gen gentlemen, please welcome to the City Club of Chicago the Chief Executive Officer of McPeer, Letitia Peralta Davis. Letitia. At the end. No, not at all. Hi, good afternoon. It's great to be back here at the City Club. Um, before I uh, begin some prepared remarks, uh, I just want to acknowledge that uh, you can't run an organization like McPeer without an extraordinarily talented uh, staff. And there's a good many of them here today, and there's uh, their support is very much appreciated. I'd like all of them to please stand up just so we can acknowledge you today. They're all sitting around the room. Please stand up. Come on, you guys. Stand up. It takes a lot of people to keep this um, well-oiled machine going. Thank you, Jay. This afternoon, I'm pleased to be here and honored to be one of your first guests to appear after Election Day. Regardless of the outcome last Tuesday, regardless of your preferences, whether you gl you're glad that we live in a blue state or wish we lived in a red state or wished it were just a shade of purple, I think we can all agree that we're glad it's finally over. Now I realize why Thanksgiving falls when it does in late November because we're also thankful that the political campaigns are over in early November. After hearing all of the ads and commercials over the past few months, I almost feel that somewhere in my speech, I should have the disclaimer, I am Letitia Davis, and I approve this message. <laughs> I hope by the time I'm done that you'll approve this message too. It was just over a year ago that I was invited here to speak to you about the MPEA and its two primary val uh, venues, McCormick Place and Navy Pier. It gave me a chance to share with you some of the key items on our agenda at that time. Today, I want to do the same and to focus on certain issues that have gained attention in the public and in the media in recent months regarding McCormick Place. However, before beginning any discussions about our agenda, our priorities, and our challenges, it's important to first identify for you one fundamental and overriding reality that guides virtually every decision considered at the MPEA today. It is this. We at McCormick Place operate in a highly competitive and an increasingly competitive environment. Was that the reality we faced last year? Yes, but with each passing month, that element of competition grows more intense. Over the course of the past year, the fight for business within the convention and tourism industry has become more fierce. Pressures from our, uh, from our customer base, pressures to cut costs, to improve the overall show experience have intensified. What was once the voices of a few show managers and trade show organizers asking for change has grown into a full chorus, a choir, if you will, all singing from the same hymnal in a well-orchestrated ensemble, all demanding change. Meantime, business practices and marketing maneuvers by other venues and other cities have become more aggressive and the resources that they use to trumpet their assets seem to grow at a similar rate. Although I was looking forward to presenting myself to you today as a post-election day speaker, giving us all a break from politics for a while, when I began to consider how to best present our situation to you, the image that kept coming to mind was that of a campaign. 
That is what we face. We, the Metropolitan Peer and Exposition Authority, are in a campaign, a hard-fought battle for votes. There is a distinct electorate that we are trying to influence, a diverse constituency of voters made up, in part, of trade executives, meeting planners, exhibitors, and attendees, just to name a few. Each of these constituencies has specific issues that we work diligently to address. The medical associations look for faster connections to the internet. Educational groups want meeting room space closer to exhibit space. But if you did a poll or ran a focus group of all of these voters, one common theme would emerge. And as in most presidential or statewide elections, it boils down to the same thing, pocketbook issues, economics, plain and simple. Before casting their vote for Chicago or any other city, a show needs assurances that their site selection is, above all, a fiscally sound decision. When Chicago is not cost competitive, that vote, that election, is in doubt. Our customers want, they need, they deserve a quality show experience carried out professionally, but they need it at the most affordable price. In the campaign for business in this industry, it is not simply a two-party race. There are a handful of perennial top-tier candidates, of which Chicago is one, along with Las Vegas, Orlando, and a growing list of other candidates on the ballot. Like, an, like any candidate, we campaign hard. We have a field operation, a grassroots operation, if you will. In our case, a dedicated sales team made up of the MPEA and the Chicago Convention and Tourism Bureau, which heads out across the country. We have to pick up votes through handshakes. If there were babies to kiss, we do that too. The fact is, however, as in any campaign, an advantage goes to those with a sizable war chest. And we are up against some well-funded competitors. I'll have more to say on that in a moment. Unlike a normal election, our campaign does not end on the first Tuesday in November. Every time we open our doors for a trade show, convention, or meeting, our constituents are checking us out to see if we offer them a reason to stay the course or to make a radical change. The fight for business is ongoing, so our efforts are ongoing. We have many successes to point to during the past year. I believe that our greatest success has come in dealing with the fiscal condition of the MPEA. As you know, our entire industry was and is still dealing with the aftermath of September 11th and as well as the uh, overall economic downturn. The impact has meant lower revenues. Lower revenues from rent on the show floor, lower food and beverage receipts, lower trade services revenue, lower parking revenues, and lower revenues at our hotel. When I arrived at the MPA approximately 18 months ago, we faced the prospect of an enormous deficit. We were impacted by two deficits, actually, our own internal deficit and the state's deficit, which led to the elimination of our $5 million state subsidy. Last year, entering fiscal year 04, we were uh, facing not only a one-year deficit of $25 million, but a three-year shortfall of $62 million. As any of you who work for or manage a firm of any size, you know that this is not a tenable position. You simply can't continue to operate like that. So we made some changes. Spending cuts, personnel cuts, salary freezes to non-represented employees, and some revenue enhancements. As a result of those changes, we went from a projected three-year deficit of $62 million down to a projected three-year deficit of $22 million. That's $40 million in red ink that we began to erase. Not only that, but we finished FY04 approximately $5 million ahead of budget. But in fiscal year 2004, I'm proud to say we did more than just simply enhance our bottom line. Some shows at McCormick Place set all-time records in terms of attendees and exhibitors. We brought in new business at McCormick Place. One new show, more than any others, put in sharp focus why McCormick Place is one of a kind. Supercom, 
the leading event in the telecommunications industry came to McCormick Place in June. It brought more than 30,000 people to Chicago, and I think I heard about 30,000 compliments during that show. Supercom exhibitors praised our facility, our Internet 2 connections, and our exceptional bandwidth, important distinctions between us and everyone else. Far and away, this was the best service that Supercom had ever received from a convention facility. In short, since my last visit here, we continued to get our fiscal house in order. We took on new business. We delivered top-of-the-line services to our customers. And we began building for the future, literally. As many of you know from my speech last year, we were, at that time, planning for the groundbreaking of our McCormick Place West expansion project. The design documents, shaped in large part by customer input, are completed, and we broke ground this spring. Occupancy is set for 2008. As I've said, with 470,000 square feet of exhibit space, the new building will mean we can hold multiple major trade shows at once. With 250,000 square feet of meeting room space, we will capture more of the meetings business, which represents the fastest growing segment in our field. We're going to have a ballroom as big as any that exists in the country today, 100,000 square feet. With all due respect to Maggiano's, and I thought lunch was great, the new ballroom will be about 33 times the size of this room. Just something to think about, Jay, in case you've ever feel cramped in here. <laughs> what I also predicted last year is that it would eventually mean more business. More events, more dates available on the calendar, fewer times when we would have to turn away business, especially at peak times of the year. What surprises me is that this prediction has come true already. I had every confidence that I could stand before a city club luncheon in 2008 and tell you that, ex that expansion has paid off. But I did not expect that here we are, still three and a half years away from opening the doors and already new customers are lining up to use the new building. Some convention centers have ribbon cutting ceremonies before ever signing up new customers. We had a groundbreaking ceremony where we announced nine new customers representing 14 separate shows. Our list of new customers for the West Building continues to grow. Business will grow, revenue will grow, revenues that will be shared throughout the city of Chicago, including the communities that make up the immediate McCormick Place neighborhood, places like Motor Row, Bronzeville, Chinatown, and others. We will have a new front door, a city gate entrance on Indiana Avenue that truly embraces our community. For the first time, McCormick Place will truly become a neighborhood place. All Chicagoans will benefit. Those 14 new shows, shows that I mentioned will generate approximately $230 million in economic activity. They'll bring in $13 million in tax revenues and support 3,500 hospitality jobs. And that's just the beginning. But expansion is important not simply because of what Chicago will gain from it. Expansion is imperative because of the gains that other cities and other venues are making on us today. Other cities are gaining on us. And the clearest measure is seen in terms of inventory, square footage. Take a look. Here's how the industry stacks up. At 2.2 million square feet of exhibit space, McCormick Place is the largest self-contained building, but just barely. Orlando, you can see, is right on our heels. If you add the two Las Vegas facilities, you see that they actually are breaking the three million mark. With the um, Mandalay, which is not on this chart, they're at four million. With expansion taking us to 2.675 million square feet, we are able to stay uh, competitive and keep pace. As I said earlier, competition between MPEA and our competition is fierce. In many ways, the degrees to which we are tar targeted by those other venues is a reminder of our enviable position in this field. We remain the standard by which other cities and other venues are judged. 
we do feel that we represent the best in our business. Best facilities, best services, best people, certainly the best city. Nonetheless, there are examples where daylight exists between us and our competition. To go back to the campaign analogy, during different elections, we've heard about gaps. There are gaps that exist today between us and our competition. One area where such a gap exists is in the area of cost, the costs associated with labor and matters of efficiency. For much of the past year, we have, had, we have made this a top agenda item. This past June, Governor Blagojevich and the mayor helped us kick off some urgent discussions with union, contractors, and show management. During the summer, we held smaller working group meetings with those partners. Just recently, we reconvened as a single group. We are trying to address some key issues, issues of cost, issues of efficiency, issues related to the overall experience of our customers. We are committed to letting customers see complete transparency in the billing process. We are committed to substantial, quantifiable savings passed on to the customer. Let me explain why we're engaging in these talks. We need customers. Customers are the reason we open up for business every day. And we need to respond to what our customers are saying. They say that they need Chicago to be as cost effective as competitive convention centers. They say they want fewer hassles. But it's not just about responding to what our customers say. We need to respond to what they see, the data, the facts. They see them every day and all clearly point to significant differences between us and our competition. Let me just share a couple with you. First, a look at the number of labor jurisdictions. Twice as many as Orlando, Atlanta, and others. Four times as many as Las Vegas. That costs money, that costs time. That costs inefficiency, causes inefficiency. Here's another key data point. Standby labor. The difference is staggering. In practice, the real figure is three times worse since it is a per hall charge. We have three separate halls. I have made it clear. The governor has said it. The mayor has said it. There's only one way for this to work, by ensuring that every party, the unions, the contractors, show management, the hospitality communion, community, and the authority all make contribution. No single group is going to be told or even asked to shoulder the entire burden. And just as there is only one way, a unified way, for us to succeed, there is ultimately only one set of goals for these talks. To grow the number of jobs. To increase revenues that pay for those jobs. That's it. That's why we are doing this. More shows. More business means more people doing the work. Growing the business, creating a greater incentive for shows to locate here, will clearly require labor, the contractors, the show management, and the MPEA to make hard choices. But if we succeed, it's a win-win. If we don't, it's a lose-lose. That's why it's a priority. I can report that there is much common ground while there are still differences to be worked out, our friends on both sides of the table, or around the table given how many parties are involved, all acknowledge the importance of this matter. Everyone recognizes the importance of ensuring that our customers' concerns are addressed. I am pleased, in fact, today to announce one step in that direction. Beginning this week, members of various unions will be participating in the first of a series of quarterly training workshops to help us achieve a higher level of customer satisfaction. This training demonstrates first and foremost to our customers that we are listening and that we will do what it takes to address their concerns. Second, it represents a consensus. The training is being carried out thanks to a shared financial commitment by the MPEA, the labor, and the contractor community. I view this as a positive signal for more comprehensive progress to come. Speaking of gaps, 
I think there's also a gap in quality between the work that our labor performs compared to the workforces in other cities. Ours is the best skilled labor in America. However, such advantages can easily be mitigated, drowned out, or erased by yet another gap. One that is glaring and the longer it continues weakens our position in the marketplace. It is a gap in funding. What we receive from where and how it is spent. As I said earlier, we face not only competition, but well-funded competition. Many of our competitors are now being subsidized by their state and local governments at a record pace often through a dedicated percentage of taxes. Unlike them, we at the MPA cannot dip into a pool of state subsidized funds to market our building or offer deeper discounts to current or prospective customers. This puts us at a significant disadvantage and puts tremendous strains on us to keep up. Take a look. This shows you the annual budget for sales and marketing by different convention and visitor bureaus around the country. I just want to assure you that you, those of you who might think there's a typo, no, Chicago is not listed. Chicago is literally off the charts. With our budget of $14 million for our bureau, we don't even rank in the top 10. Las Vegas is outspending us in terms of sales and marketing at least tenfold. This is not good. People ask us, why, how is it that Las Vegas is able to make a run at you guys? How are you letting them eat into your market share? I think this chart makes it abundantly clear. What's amazing and admirable, I think, and a credit to the authority and the Bureau, is that we're able to compete at all despite this disadvantage. And that is indeed what is happening. Last year, we had 25 shows at McCormick Place that qualify as part of the Trade Show 200. The TS 200 is not a measurement that we prefer to use since it omits many of the smaller yet still significant events held in this industry. It also fails to consider meetings, another growing area in this field. Nonetheless, despite its flaws, it has become a favorite measuring stick in the media, much like the Dow Jones, which tracks the performance of just a handful of companies. As you can see, we exceeded in 2003 the number of such shows for any point over the previous decade. Meanwhile, the measure we prefer to use is one of net square footage booked. Earlier, I compared us to politicians. The fact is, we're more like podiatrists. We get paid by the foot. By 2006, based on current shows booked, we will be back to our highest level except for pre-9-11 heyday year of 2000. And that figure is only going up as we continue to work to bring in more business. I am confident, I am certain, that our business would increase substantially, exponentially even, if we, the MPEA and the CCTB, had access to the kinds of resources our competitors have. Here's another key difference, where the money comes from. You do the math. By comparison, we may have a higher hotel tax rate, but add up the share of that money that is then reinvested in the Convention Center and Visitors Bureau. In Chicago, 20%. In Las Vegas, 87%. Orlando and Philadelphia, virtually all of it, 99%. Given that the authority adds more than $2 billion in economic activity to the state, Given that our state's economic future depends on maintaining our preeminent role in the convention and tourism industry, wouldn't it make sense to see how much more business we could generate with the proper resources? I believe so. In the meantime, it's incumbent upon our General Assembly to address another urgent matter. Because of the continued downturn in the economy, 9-11, SARS, and the Iraq War, just to name a few, the collection of visitor-related taxes that pay the debt service on the McCormick Place expansion bonds is down, 30% below projections. Our bonds were authorized in 1992 by the legislature. Several expansions later, the same authority taxes are dedicated to paying down the debt. During the 1990s, these taxes not only repaid the bonds, 
but created a tax surplus reserve fund. That surplus has been used to pay for needed capital improvements and to fund our gaps in the post-2001 tax collections. The reserve is drying up. We project that the surplus fund will be depleted in fiscal year 2006. Contractually, when these reserves are exhausted and without sufficient tax collections, we will tap into state sales tax to meet our debt service requirements. And that could total more than $450 million over the life of the bonds. To avoid this imminent drain on already strained state resources, MPEA proposes to restructure the McCormick Place expansion bonds. It is a solution which avoids further strains on the state's general fund. I want to underscore, our mission is not to make money. However, we cannot afford to lose money either. Our goal is to be solvent and to generate greater economic activity and tax collections for the city of Chicago and the state of Illinois. So far, we're doing our part, cutting personnel, decreasing overhead, deferring salary increases, and at the same time, growing our business and expanding our facilities. In other areas, we need others to pitch in, whether it's our friends in labor, in the hospitality industry, the contractors, show management, or the General Assembly. Pooling our resources, sharing the burden, is the only way to succeed. After all, we face competition from one source in Nevada who is, and I hope you'll excuse me for the phrase, playing with house money spending 10 to 12 times more on marketing and sales than we do. They can afford to gamble by giving away exhibit space or giving away hotel rooms. Another competitor in Florida can offer their customers the world. Okay, it's a small world after all. <laughs> but with 2 million square feet of inventory, their world is growing. Now, do we want to be Las Vegas? No. Do we want to be Orlando? No. One city can tell you that what happens here stays here. We don't. We want people to know that what happens in Chicago at McCormick Place will spread far outside the building, far outside the convention floor. I began by comparing this to a campaign, by comparing MPEA to a candidate. As we all know, some candidates try to pass themselves off as standing for mom, apple pie, and baseball, and while they're at it, lower taxes. Well, we at MPA represent lower taxes too. The, mon the tax monies that we collect uh, from visitors alone adds up to about $169 million annually, lowering the pressure to increase taxes on local residents. That figure is estimated to rise to as much as $251 million when the West Building opens for business. And while we might not represent mom, apple pie, and baseball just yet, we at the MPEA represent something almost as special. We represent Chicago. Three million people came to McCormick Place last year. Eight million to Navy Pier. People from around the country and around the world. We are proud to be what they think of when they think of Chicago. To represent our city, to represent our state. And that is why we ask all Chicagoans, all residents of Illinois, to support us. I hope that I've given you all the reason to support us in our efforts to support the future of the MPEA. Thank you all very much for your kind attention. Tisha, as a tiny token of thanks for your presentation. Oh, I'm sorry. Questions? The question was, how do we compete with Orlando and Las Vegas in terms of weather? Um, I guess they have a hard time filling in middle of summer uh, in Orlando or Las Vegas. There's just uh, they have pretty good weather year round. So seasonal depending on what city you're in. We're cold in the winter and they're really hot in the summer. Other questions? Well, one of the points that uh, 
Letitia Ray's, which I always find amazing, is the 8 million visitors to Navy Pier. I do a number of tours for the uh, mayor's office, and um, more people visit Navy Pier than all of the other cultural and recreational venues in the city of Chicago on an annual basis. Um, yeah, Navy Pier is uh, awesome. We have one of our uh, partners with us today from the Children's Museum, Peter England, who's the CEO of the Children's Museum. And with an anchor like that, how can you lose? No, it's a great place and we try very hard to uh, keep the venue new and special and for visitors who come uh, multiple times per year, I think they find that it's always, uh, there's always something new happening at Navy Pier. Okay, if there are no other questions, I'll, I'll go back to my line one. A small uh, token of appreciation from the City Club to you. Um, one of our mugs, it will pass any um, ethics test uh, that you can imagine. Um, 